process analysis writing. If you'd like to follow along with me on your computer, open up the process analysis PowerPoint, the process analysis rubric, and then just stay logged into Moodle because I'm going to click around to different links and different examples and such. Okay. If you would like to just look up at the board and follow along there, wonderful, that's great. But there shouldn't be any typing and clicking around and working on anything, just simply, boom, just this. Okay. All right, process analysis. What is it? Okay, for one thing, it's going to be different than probably any writing you've done before. Okay, um, it's kind of a combination of list writing, but yet it's directions on, on how to do something. And you'll see some examples in a little bit. You will find out that word choice is the main element of this particular uh, writing style, which may be difficult for some people. Because what works in your mind, what makes sense to you, might not make sense to your reader. And you need to think about that. And that might be one of the big obstacles that you have during this process. And that's fine, and, and that's good, that's a challenge. We'll, we'll figure out how to deal with that. But when you get writing and you are and you're getting feedback of confusion, it's probably centered around your word choice. Something in here makes sense, but between here and your fingers, the keyboard to the hard drive, computer, all that stuff, something got lost. Something didn't translate accordingly, is what I'm talking about. And so that's what uh, the main difficulty with this, even though for most this is an easy type of writing, however, the actual typing of it and the revision stage um, can be challenging, but that's writing. Writing can be challenging. Um, some of the characteristics of the writing. Uh, a lot of this process analysis that you've seen, you know, analyzing a process of doing something, you, you might refer to as directions. If you've ever baked anything, follow the recipe, isn't that, you know, a process that you're following along? Um, if you've ever looked at a how-to website, how to do something, Okay, they give you a process and they analyze. They tell you why you are doing this. It's not just do this, do this, do this. It's do this because of blah, 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 blah. It's kind of like uh, if you're changing out your electrical wiring in your house, turn off your circuit breakers. That's a good one. Okay, that would be the first thing. The second part of that would be because you don't want to die. Make sure all electricity is off to avoid electrocution. Some people need that. Have you ever heard just stupid, stupid, whether they're laws or rules about things, okay? Don't open up the emergency exit door while flying. That makes sense. Any rule that's been made, for the most part, I'm sure there are exceptions, probably has been made because somebody has tried to do that before, you know? Somebody has tried to change their electrical wiring without turning off their breaker. Have you ever been zapped before by electricity? Probably your fault, and you probably just had a slip of the mind. Why do you think they say don't stick knives and forks in electrical sockets? Because people have done it, okay? so. In your, in your directions, it's an a example that like, do this because of this. You analyze the process, um, which might be the easiest type of writing we do all semester. But the tricky aspect is that word choice, making sure that you are translating uh, what's going from your mind or transposing what's going through your mind to us. Um, so it needs to be chronological, okay? You don't want to tell them how to bake a cake and start with, Step 6, 3, 10, 12, 18, all of that. I mean, obviously, obviously, chronological in nature. Um, <coughs> meaning that it's not just a, ooh, oh, I got it, awesome, done. It's 
the next person can do it. It can be replicated by many different types of people, different educations of people. That is not only in chronological order, but it can be replicated. It's not a fluke, a one-time thing. Um, it's instructional and formative. The writing piece can tell readers how to do something. Okay. Like I just said. Uh, what are real-life examples? I've already mentioned a few of them for you. Um, you know, registration steps on a website, how to register for something. Have you ever applied for something online? Yeah. Okay. There are steps. Even if you bought something online, it's usually not just one screen, is it? Don't they need to take you to a secure site? And you get beeped with a little icon or a little thing telling you, hey, heads up, you're leaving this site or you're you know, unsecured, blah, blah, blah. Then you need to go put in your shipping address and stuff. And then you hit next. Then you go and put in your credit card information. Good. Then you click again. And then you have a slide that says, you know, a order confirmation. Are you sure? Yes. And you hit yes, continue, finalize, pay, whatever. And then confirm. Here is your confirmation number. An email will come. There's a process. Okay. There's a process. So you may want to do a writing on how to shop on eBay. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? You pretty much, you can write about, as long as it's school appropriate, you can write about any process you want. We've had some, and you'll see some examples uh, later on in Moodle, you know, how to drum. Okay? It's not get stick, stand there, and... No, it's, there's technique. You know, there's a whole bunch of things. And you just break it down and discuss it and analyze. You need to hold your sticks, not like this. You want to hold one here, turn the other one over. Why? There's where you do the writing and you go into it and analyzing. It's not just listing. We've had one on, on how to field dress a deer. Do you know what that means? How to clean a deer. Skin it, gut it, get it ready for processing. Okay, um, that one might be up on Moodle for you to take a look at and, and see. Okay, um, there is a, a, it's not just a writing. You guys are going to put together a presentation for us, whatever that looks like to you. If that's a slideshow, if that's video, whatever you want to do with that, we can talk more about that at the end of this. Um, you're going to have to do that. Okay, um, so telling them what to do step by step. You sentences written in command form. It does not say you. You need to do this. You need to do this. Just say, you're change, changing a tire? Take off the lug nuts. I'm commanding you. You see, just it's easy to follow order. And I think a lot of these, as we go through these slides, things start to make sense, and you've done these before. Okay. Use sequential form, obviously. Use clear sentences that show the reader how the process is completed, in addition to telling them how the process should be done. That's probably one of the most important bullets. Some of you in here will just start making a list. There's no analysis. Where's the analysis? And that's where that last bullet is a good reminder. So coming back to that. Um, show the readers how something occurs or how something is completed. You know, why something is the way it is. It's written in third person point of view, so no I and no you. Okay, so you can use it, that type of thing. It's a, it's a fine pronoun. Um, you know, in paragraph form, this isn't bullet points. It's not lists. It's written. And we'll show you some examples in a little bit. Uh, transition words are huge. First, next, followed by, after finishing this, move on. And there's a whole bunch of transition words to come by. But you want to get away from first, second, third, fourth, fifth, do this, sixth, do this, seventh. You want to kind of our interest a little bit. You want to try to be a writer, you know, and not just falling into a cookie cutter mentality of writing. Um, and it does not require the reader to perform steps, but does explain, okay? It does explain, it does educate us. I might not need to know and physically do the tire changing, but in reading yours, I understand how to do it and why to do the steps that you're telling me. So I, can, I could replicate that if I need to. Um, the audience, this is important. You know, 
who would need to know about this process? And why would the reader need to know this process? That's important. Why is this significant? Changing a tire, how to jump start your car. You might think, well, my dad knows how to do that. Um, and maybe he will be, but are you always going to live with your dad? Could there be a time where you work third shift somewhere or you close the store at whatever night and you're the only one there and it's one in the morning and you're in the parking lot and you have a dead battery? Or you need to you have a flat and you have to change your tire? Do you know what to do? Do you see how I'm rationalizing this to you for the reason that you need to know this? Why I need to know how to field dress a deer, I don't know. But if I wanted to be a hunter, if I was looking into doing that, that would probably be relevant. Okay, so it's this is what you need to know, and this is why you need to know it. And I'm going to show you without the eye, but this paper will show you how to do it and why it needs to be done in the proper way. And that's what your purpose is. You want to get the result, that person able to fully uh, go through that. Um, your thesis statement there at the bottom of your intro, it should tell the reader what the significance of the process and highlight important points about it that you will further discuss. So just like setting up the rest of your paper normally, um, you have you tell us what's going to happen and what we're going to see. You save a lot of the, the good details for later on, but you do get to mention it, you know, as you uh, as you uh, about what's going to happen. You mention that up in your thesis. Uh, your presentation, okay, your presentation at the end of this is going to be you incorporating some visual aid. If the process that you can do during your presentation, your five minute, six minute presentation, if you can do that here while you talk about it, that might be pretty cool. Some people had to do videos because it was something at home. Others, you can just make a PowerPoint. But in your PowerPoint, you probably are gonna need a lot of visuals, a lot of pictures of the various steps. Does that make sense? Okay, so whatever you choose, it's going to take a lot of uh, procurement on your part to get this stuff. If you do a video, you'll just have to make sure your, your camera good quality is not shaky and all that different stuff that you might not worry about. But if you mess up, you can just redo it. So there are some benefits. Plus, you can, we can just hit play. You can sit there while we watch it in case you don't want to get up here and talk and that type of thing. Okay? We'll talk more about the presentation down the road, but it's your basic presentation you are not reading us your paper, but you're presenting to us the process and you're analyzing it. This is why you do it and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so you have all the essential steps and you must maintain the audience's attention. You don't want to get up here and go into boring, blah, blah, blah. It is a presentation. Okay. This is a separate grade. You're going to get graded on your paper. You're going to get graded on your presentation. You put those two together, and that gets your process analysis portion of your grade. And I think that's 15% of the semester. Sounds right? So each one of these is 7.5%. Okay, so you don't want to just do well on one and scrap the other. And maybe I'll weight them a little bit more for the paper. I don't know. But both of those go within that 15% category. Okay? Um, the rubric is something that you always need to take, uh, take a look at. Um, especially now, because you can see that I've weighted the different categories. Okay, Your ideas count for 30%, so everything is not equal. Okay, Your conventions and, and all of that stuff at the bottom is not equal to your word choice and ideas and, and all of that. So I'm starting to weight certain things. I may do this throughout the rest of the semester here and there. But I, I want to show you what's the most important thing of your process analysis. And as you look, ideas are 30% and organization is 20%. 50% of your paper's grade is going to be on your ideas and, and word choice and organization. Excuse me, word choice is down a little bit. But your organization structure that you're following in order and analyzing that type of thing. So that's the main premise. Okay, So that's 50% of your grade. And you can see that voice and word choice are a third, 30%. I know it's not exact, but 30% is the choice of words you use and the voice. Is there, is there personality there? Or are you a robot talking and giving me directions? Okay. 
So this is important, and you can see based on the weights what Allersmeyer values as significant in this particular writing. This would be different if we were doing a different type of writing, obviously. And you can see that it's a little bit more in depth than what we've had thus far. Same premise. Look at the columns. Look at what's a two, look at what's a three. What keeps you in the two and what keeps you in the three? Okay, so make sure you understand that and we will have time as we go along. Um, lastly, if you go out to the web uh, Moodle, you can see a lot of examples, okay? Take some time and go through these. You know, how to operate a shower curtain. How to draw a rose, and that's a bad example. So take some time to look at that. Look at how vague it is, how confusing, and you know that in their mind, that makes sense. But you, you're not writing for you. You're writing for who knows. And who knows what reading ability, comprehension. So you have to write very simply, don't you? Very simply, very clear to the point. Okay. Um, some others, you know, how to write a letter. We're going to take time next week and read that. That's a professional writer. He wrote a paper, a little, he says, how to write a letter. He talked about why it's important to write a letter, which, you know, why is it important for you to know how to change your tire, jumpstart your car? Why is it important? How does one go about writing a letter? And man, that thing reeks of voice and word choice. And we'll spend time and look at that. Look at the other student examples. I put some of the presentations in there, a couple of their essays. Um, you know, how to deep fry a turkey. Anybody ever do that for Thanksgiving? You best know what you're doing, or else what could happen? Your house will burn down. You want to do this outside. It gets very hot. Oil catches fire. House fall down. Okay, others. How to skin a deer. Uh, there's an advisory on that. It's a little graphic. Okay, do not watch that if you're a little queasy. Uh, others. Some students made movies, and I decided to put those up. How to change a flat tire, changing your ringtones, how to make comments. Okay, so your assignment over this weekend is, what do you want to write about? Something that you like, something that you love, something that you're knowledgeable in, because you don't have to do research, okay? But you need to be able to convey to us how it's done but also why it's important that we know this. 